Paraguay, a country of untamed beauty. Paraguay, a country of many wonders. Paraguay, a land of tradition. Paraguay, a land of destruction. Paraguay, a country of two cultures. Paraguay, the history of a land told through their life. It might be a landscape. It's dry on one side of the country. The high nut is a unique land of rivers and people, animals and plants, and an interesting culture of the past, especially their government. How does the government reflect back to the past and economic choices? The leaders, the impacts, the events of it all. That is what I'm answering to inform you, my peers, of one small part of the The mayor gained a tuba granny named the farm with the name of the cargo before any family. In the early 1700s, recent missionaries were set up to protect the granny from Portuguese slave traders and Spanish colonies. They taught the granny to trade, improve civilization, do art, and practice the religion of Catholicism. Now, why they are Catholic Rome. The, the missionaries scratched by the king of Spain in 1767, though. After Paraguay gained independence from Spain in 1811, they had a dictator named Jose Gaspar Rodriguez de Francia. He used to be part of a junta. He didn't let the Paraguayans communicate with the outside world and govern until his death in 1840. The new leader was then elected and decided to start accessing the citizens outside of just their land. The war took a line from Presently, the president of Paraguay is President Horatio Cartes, and it is a constitutional democracy. Although Paraguay has gone through many different leaders, they have a more stable government than Cotton, one of Paraguay's exports and part of their economy. There are so many other elements of the economy, though. But to figure this whole story out, I had an open question to answer. How does the economic choices impact the society and government of Paraguay? All the research questions I had impacts jobs, imports. Imagine them all combined. That's what I'm doing for you right now with these bursts of yarn. Close your eyes, close your mind, and listen to Paraguay's economics. About half of Paraguay workers are in the business of agriculture and forestry. Since agriculture is a big job in Paraguay, it affects the exports and imports there. In 1991, Paraguay finished building the Itapiu 
stand in the Paralana, on the Paralana Road. That is where all the electricity is for the nation, where extra insects come from. It is one of the biggest rivers in the world. Unfortunately, the operations of Disney Paralana, the Hydrovia, that Uruguay, Brazil, Bolivia, and Argentina approved in 1994 has not worked with its environmental problems. The river transportation is primary source of the resource. Cement, steel products, steel and electric power are as industries in the The exports are cotton, wood, leather, soybeans, and wheat. For imports, there are road vehicles, tobacco, taxes, and cash. Paraguay exports with Brazil 30%, Russia 10%, Argentina 9.3%, and Chile 5.3%. Additionally, the export from India. 28.5% Brazil, 26.5% Argentina, 14.2% US, 6.5%. In 2012, Fernando Lugo's impeachment took place. A year later, President Carter was elected. Through the 2000s, the freedoms and business rates kept going up and down. The economy has gone up and down, but from information of their politics and economics, I know they have good aspects of it and bad ones too. They definitely have an extraordinary structure of economics and politics. Paraguay's geography definitely influences the culture and traditions of Paraguay. Paraguay is a landlocked country in South America. It is surrounded by Brazil, Bolivia, and Argentina. It has a subtropical climate in Paraguay with October through March being the summer months. April through September are the winter months. The population in Paraguay is 6,703,860. 95% of the people in Paraguay are mixed Spanish. Geography in Paraguay is very interesting. The Tropic of Capricorn goes straight through the middle of Paraguay, which causes the top half to be hotter than the bottom half. The three rivers that go through Paraguay are the Paraná River, the Paraguay River, and the Policomayo. A big landform in Paraguay is the Isis Falls. They are the largest series of waterfalls in the world. Part of the Andes Mountains are in Paraguay, and the highest peak is 2,789 feet. It is called San Rafael Coronita. The average temperature in summer is a low of 84 degrees Fahrenheit and a high of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The rainforest has an average rainfall of 67 inches per year. There are many holidays that are celebrated with parties in Paraguay. New Year's Day is still on January 1st, of course, and Enfany is on January 6th. Carnival is a week of parades and parties in February. Heroes Day is March 1st and Sema Santa is Holy Week, which is before Easter. Labor Day is May 1st, and their Independence Day is from the 14th till the 15th of May. Mother's Day is May 15th, and Chaco Armenis is June 12th. Dia de la Amistad is Friendship Day, and is on July 30th. Founding of Asuncion City is on August 15th and they celebrate with large parades. Constitution Day is August 25th and Victory of Bernan is on September 29th. Columbus Day is on October 12th and All Saints Day is on November 1st. Version of Kakupe Day is on 
December 8th. And Christmas is on the 25th, like all other countries. All of these are very important to the Paraguay, but Semi-Santa is the most important holiday of them all. Semi-Santa is important because for that whole week, they have family gatherings. Clothing is important to the people of Paraguay. They have tailors that make clothes fit for them, exactly, so they can show themselves outside of their house. The women wear bright colors because that is their way of life. They normally wear dresses and sandals. The men wear suits made out of a light cotton so they don't overheat. The kids wear shorts and a top. The kids are the only ones who wear shorts because the women wear dresses and the men wear pants. All the clothes are made out of a thin cotton material because of the very hot weather they have. The hot weather in Paraguay makes these plants ones that would grow here. Cotton seeds, soybeans, peanuts, coconut, palm, castor beans, flax seed, sunflower seeds, oils, and many oil seeds. Paraguay grows a lot of oils. The food crops they grow are manokik, maize, beans, and peanuts. They eat a lot of cornbread. Cornbread and a drink is their breakfast. Lunch is normally big and this meal is eaten with the whole family. Dinner is at night and later, like eight or nine. For the festivals, Paraguay has food there and sometimes it is a special dish they only eat on this day. All in all, I hope this has taught you more about Paraguay's geography and how it affects the cultures and traditions. Paraguay's religion is a major factor in Paraguay. They use religion to help them through their daily life. Their family gets together for lunch and dinner to talk. Paraguay is 90% Roman Catholic, which means there are a lot of Roman Catholics that live there, and they have more Roman Catholic churches. There are a variety of religions in Paraguay, even though most people don't like it. But most of the people are Roman Catholic. Roman Catholics believe in one God. They believe that God created everything on this earth. The Spanish were the ones that taught them to believe this way. And the churches are Spanish also. The popes in Paraguay are Pope Francis and Pope Benedict XVI. There has been some conflict between them. There is rankings for these people. The Pope is the head of it all then the bishop, and lastly, the priest. Marriage for people in Paraguay is very interesting. You always get married in a church if you are religious. For the marriage to be official, it has to be performed civilly. And your parents have to approve your marriage partner. Some couples don't get married but live together, and others get married but don't live together. The kids stay at their mother's house for their whole life. Important holidays to the people of Paraguay are Semana Santa Day and Virgin of Cacupe Day. These holidays are important to the Catholic people. Semana Santa Day is Holy Week for them. Virgin of Cacupe Day is where they travel by foot from where they live to the town of Cacupe to have a mass that goes all day. At the mass, they get guidance for the new year to come. As you can see, religion is a big factor in the Paraguayans' life. Grid pattern in the streets of a section, the capital of Paraguay. The way the stone chapel, National Pantheon of Heroes, reaches through the sky in the center of the capital. The way the entire city looks is in the typical Spanish colonial design. This all goes with the foods, dances, and traditions. They are all of Spanish influence. 
95% of the population understands the typical Paraguayan language, Guarini. 90% understands Spanish. How this one country became two different cultures in every person is a direct reflection of the history of this unique and destructive land. Paraguay started with the only inhabitants being small Guarani tr tribes living in tiny villages. These homes were small mud houses with palm thatched roof roofs. The Guarani have been living in Paraguay since at least a millennium and have always had the goal of toppling the Mayan Empire for gold and silver. When the Spanish conquistadors dis discovered Paraguay for King Charles V in 1524, they shared the same common goal with the Guarani, topple the Mayan Empire. So, at first, there was no war. However, Spain started building all their large brick palaces and cathedrals with limestone, just like you would see in Spain. This did not endure to the Guarani, but they let it happen. But when the Spanish colonized Paraguay for Spain in 1537, that really set them off. However, for hundreds of years, Spain wasn't really in Paraguay. They used Paraguay for trade. They still had all their cities, but it wasn't a focus. They were in Argentina at Buenos Aires, focused on the Je Jesus missions, trying to get everyone to the Catholic religion. So in 1811, Paraguay claimed their independence from Spain, and a series of dictators were put in place. One was Francisco Salon Le Lopez. He almost single-handedly killed off Paraguay in the War of Triple Alliance, also known as the Paraguayan War. Paraguay fought Brazil, Argentina, and Uruguay. Much of the population died, and all of their buildings that had been built by Spain were destroyed. Everything had to be rebuilt, the entire government and all the buildings. They started by building their most needed buildings, like the President's House and the Chapel, National Pantheon of Heroes. Paraguay had no architects, so they built the buildings like the Spanish would. They built what had always been there. Paraguay was made unique because of its history. It has been destroyed many times, but because of this and the influence of the Spain, it is a country of two cultures. Paraguay tells its history not only in text, but through its government, geography, religion, and architecture.